Hi, welcome to another edition of Legal Quilts. This was supposed to be sewing the borders onto the quilt, the Irish chain quilt that we're making, but I had a little problem getting the border fabric. I wanted to use the same fabric that I used in the blocks here. You see this middle fabric? I wanted to use that as the border, but I didn't have enough from what I went and when I bought it the first time to also do borders. So I went back to my local quilt shop and they didn't have the fabric. But Missouri Star did. So I ordered some from Missouri Star and they cut it and shipped it and FedEx lost the package. So by the time we realized FedEx had lost the package, we uh, Missouri Star was out of the fabric. They refunded me my money and they were all wonderful. This is not Missouri Star's fault. FedEx lost the package. I managed to find some more in an Etsy shop um, and it's on the way, but I don't have it yet. So we're doing something else here. Plus my fabric, my scrap bin is overflowing, literally overflowing. So I thought we'd do braid today. This is a nice simple one. Great for using scraps, especially if you use a lot of strips like I do. So um, that's what I'm going to do today is show you how to do this very, very simple braid quilt, braid um, block. It's not really a block. You work in columns, and the cool thing about this is you can make it as long as you want. These are small because I needed something to show y'all. But this is basically what it looks like when you're done. Okay. And you start with strips. They can be any width as long as you cut them three times as long. So I'm working with two and a half inches wide by seven and a half inches, okay? And it is very, very simple. This is a great scrap quilt to do if you just want something to work on when you don't have a lot of time. You can cut the strips in advance, keep them in some sort of container near your sewing machine, and then sew whenever you want to relax or just get some machine time in because it's so simple. So you cut and you want a wide variety. And to make this really scrappy, when you grab them out of the bin, kind of mix them up a little bit, okay? Um, we don't want this to be planned. You just don't want the same fabric next to each other, but you can use the same fabric in the block, especially if, okay? Um, I didn't because, again, small example, but if you're doing a big long one that goes, you know, full bedspread length or something, queen size, lap size even, you're going to use the same fabrics again. You just don't want them next to each other. You can do this plan too. You can use a jelly roll and all of those sorts of things. It doesn't, but if you're doing really, really scrappy like we're doing here, just mix them up. So you take your first one and your second piece and right sides together at an angle. See how they're kind of angled there? So you make a chevron or an upside down V. And then on the short side here, you just sew a little stitch. You just sew a seam using your quarter inch seam allowance. So, so, so. And then you just keep sewing. Now for your next one, you lay it so that when you're working on your left side, as you're looking down at it, you sew from the bottom up to the point. So you have to make sure this is all laid out, not, um, especially at your seam, it's not folding over on itself or anything. So you want that straight out. Yes, you can stop and press all the time, but we know my opinion of that. Um, but nobody's going to stop you if you do. Again, there's no quilt police. And quilting should be fun. And so you lay it and then see this. This is this time you're going to do the long side. You're going to just sew up the long side. There we go. All right. And then again, just sew up the long side. Quarter inch seam allowance. And this is why you can just work on this when you got a minute, set it aside. You'll always know where you left off with this block because you can see it. If you got an even number, you know you start on the left. If you don't have an even number, you start on the right. You'll be able to tell when you're doing this. You don't even have to remember. And then you do the left side. 
or the right side, sorry. And that one you start at the point and you go down, okay? And you just keep doing that until you got it as long as you want. Now you can do small blocks and sew the blocks together into long rows. This is a quilt that you work by columns. Sorry, not row, columns. You sew it into your column. You can sew blocks into your column. And the great thing is nobody cares about matching points. You just sew and sew and sew, okay? And you just keep doing that again until you get it as long as you want. All right, I'm only gonna do this to show you. This is how you start out, all right? So when you get it as big as you want, and again, this is short to show you. I only did six of them here, okay? So you get this piece that looks all like this. Oh, I was doing something with that. Um, so you get this piece that looks all like this. I'm gonna move the camera and hope I don't turn anything off. There we go, all right. So you should be able to see what I'm cutting here, all right? So what you're gonna do is very carefully, and for this I use my long ruler. Let me show you really close. Okay, can you see that? I hope I'm not making anybody seasick. You lay your ruler, I'm gonna do it on this side because I'm left-handed, remember? Okay, and it's just easier. See these points here? You want your ruler on the points, all right? So you lay your ruler on the points very carefully, okay? And this is why we're doing this with the long ruler. You want your ruler on the points from all the way to the bottom to the top. Now, if you're doing a really long one, you can do this in sections because as long as you line it up on the point, you don't have to try to keep it, you don't have to do the whole thing at once. Just line it up on the points. Bump. And one straight cut up. Okay, so now you've got a straight side here, as you can see. Okay, and then you do the same thing on this side. All right, line it up on the points all the way down, all the way up to this point. Okay, again, do it on the points because you don't want any open fabric here there we go it's being tricky it's being tricky there we go and just slice this one up oops why is that moving like that there we go yeah i know i gotta get one of those ruler handles and you just sweep these off to the side now the bottom and the top are a little different you see you got all this space right here so for the bottom, again, line it up so that there's no empty space. And you cut it right there. So you got a nice straight edge and you wind up with these different pieces. Put those aside, those will go towards crumb blocks, okay? And we'll talk about those later. This is the part I don't like so much because you cut off so much at the top. You see how it comes to a point here? You wanna square that off. Unfortunately, you got to do it where it squares, which is right about, see where that point is? Let's see, see where that point is? Find that point, put that point on the edge there and cut straight across. Put your ruler on there and cut straight across. And again, it looks like you've got a lot of left, I know, a little bit of a, triangle there but it's okay and that's your finished block all right this again this leftover little piece toss it over we'll do crumbs I'll talk about crumbs later especially as we get closer to summer because I got a great summer project for crumbs but there's your block okay so this is what this looks like oh dear and this is what it looks like your block okay and again, you just do it the whole length that you want, all right? And let me do this with these two. You can either put sashing, you, and then you just sew the columns together, okay? And you can either put sashing in between them, which is what I've seen, 
or you can just sew them together like this, okay? And it doesn't matter if your points match or anything like that. There you go. It just, again, not done, but you can kind of see it, um, how it looks, so that you can sew them together like that. Or you can flip them and have one row going up and one row going down. And you just make it as long as you need for your bed or whatever you're making it for. You just make it your quilt as long as you want your quilt and as many rows as it's wide. This is a very forgiving, scrappy pattern that goes together so easily. And it just, it uses up great scraps, especially, like I said, if you're into strips. And again, it's a great project for if you just got a few minutes here and there to work on. You can see where you left off. You know, you can make all your long columns and cut them later when you're ready to sew them together. It's just a great little scrappy project. So that's this week's edition, uh, well, this edition of Legal Quilts. Um, you know the drill, like, subscribe, comment, share it with everybody. Every little bit helps. Again, everything's up on the website. You want me to keep um, making these videos, go ahead. You can buy me a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. I changed it to cup of tea over on Kofi.com. Link is in the QR code at the end. Um, also, go back and look at the last edition, which was about helping out Ukraine, the group project. There's going to be more inf information there about um, how you can support that particular project. And so I hope you'll all go back and look at that. But that's it until next time where hopefully, no matter what, if I don't get the fabric, I'll just pick something else for the border. But next time we'll be putting together the top and putting it, well, putting on the border on the top. Until next time, remember quilting should be fun.